and me shall never die. I am the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end, the first and the last. I died and behold, I am alive forevermore. And I hold the keys of hell and death. Because I live, you also shall live. Friends, we gather together today to remember and celebrate the life of Roseanne Weaver. We come together in grief, acknowledging our human loss. May God grant us grace that in pain we may find comfort, in sorrow, hope, and in death, resurrection. Would you pray with me? Almighty God, we know that you are always more ready to hear than we are to pray. You know our needs before we ask and our ignorance in our asking. As we gather to remember Roseanne and celebrate her life, we pray that you would give to us your grace, that as we shrink before the mystery of death, we may see the light of eternity with you. Speak to us once more your solemn message of life and of death. And remind us of the promise from scripture that tells us that nothing in life or in death will be able to separate us from your great love in Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen. I find that there are a number of passages of scripture that speak words of hope and encouragement in my own life. Today we'll be hearing a couple of those passages, and for the first one I'm going to invite uh, Chad Pistel, uh, Roseanne's son-in-law, to come forward and share with us one of the most famous passages of Scripture, the 23rd Psalm. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not be in want. He makes me lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside quiet waters. He restores my soul. He guides me in paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. For you are with me, your rod and your staff, they comfort me. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil, my cup overflows. Surely goodness and love will follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. There are a couple of songs of our faith that uh, we have been asked to include in the service today. And uh, members of Roseanne's family will be uh, leading us in the vocal music and presenting uh, those songs in sign language as well. And so I'll invite them to come forward at this time and we'll join together in the hymn of our faith, It Is Well. For those of you who are in the room, the words are on the screen. If you're comfortable and able to do so, we invite you to stand and join with the family.
Please be seated. We certainly appreciate the members of the family leading us in music today. The second reading of scripture that I'd like to share with you today comes from the gospel according to John, the 14th chapter. In this chapter of scripture, Jesus is preparing the disciples for the coming of his own earthly death. And in that context, Jesus speaks these words. Do not let your hearts be troubled. Believe in God. Believe also in me. In my father's house, there are many rooms. If it were not so, would I have told you that I go to prepare a place for you? And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and will take you to myself so that where I am, there you may also be. And you know the way to the place where I am going. I will not leave you orphaned, but will come again to you. In a little while, the world will no longer see me, but you shall. Because I live, you also will live. I have said these things to you while I am still with you, but the Advocate, the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name, will teach you everything and remind you of all that I have said. Peace I leave with you. My peace I give to you. I do not give to you as the world gives, so do not let your hearts be troubled and do not let them be afraid. Most, if not all of you here today, knew Roseanne better than I did. There are some things that I know about Roseanne, though. I know that she was a lifelong part of the Galesburg community, who was proud of her community and extremely involved in it. The list of her activities, achievements, and community groups in her obituary wore me out just reading it. Her family told me that she was particularly proud to be the first woman who was actually invited to join the local Rotary group and proud to be named a Paul Harris Fellow. Roseanne loved her community. I also know that Roseanne was very artistic and tried to pass that on to her children by taking them out to sketch a tree with character. Roseanne was also very hard working, holding a number of jobs in addition to her community activities. Her family told me about how she learned bookkeeping at Carl Sandburg while working as a bookkeeper during the day, and how she worked especially hard as a woman advertising salesperson. I also know of Roseanne's great love for her family. I saw that personally by seeing her and Jan together almost every Sunday here at the church when Roseanne lived in Galesburg and many days during the week out for coffee at Innkeepers. I'm sure that the rest of her children and grandchildren also have those sort of special memories. I just happen to see them with Jan. I did hear stories of Christmas brunches at her house when she was in her prime and Zoom calls with the family in the midst of the current pandemic. I also know that Roseanne had a real and active faith in Jesus Christ. Obviously, I saw her quite often worshiping here at First United Methodist Church and also enjoying times of gathering with church members. I heard earlier this week about her involvement with church bazaars and how she crafted figures for our lounge nativity scene, including designing some clay wise men that were part of that nativity until they literally broke down the clay. 
because of the type of woman that she was, and most particularly because of her faith in Jesus Christ. We can trust that Roseanne now knows even greater and more wonderful life with God through Jesus Christ. She has not truly died, but has gone on to new and eternal life with God through her faith in Jesus. We can be comforted that one of those rooms that Jesus promised to prepare in heaven for those who believe in him has been prepared especially for her. Jesus talks about that as a promise in scripture. Jesus even goes so far as to say that if it wasn't so that I am preparing a place for you in the heavenly kingdom, I wouldn't even bring it up. Because of the life, death, and resurrection of Jesus Christ, those who believe in him do not have to worry about what happens to us or our loved ones when our lives on earth are done. We have a hope and assurance of their future life. And we can trust that even now, Roseanne is being welcomed into that place. We don't know for sure what that heavenly kingdom will look like. I, I'm not sure that we can ever really know until we get there ourselves. I, I don't know if Roseanne is currently drawing trees or playing pinochle or bridge with old friends or joining her 14th community group. But I do hope and trust that she has been reunited with her husband and all of her loved ones who have gone there ahead of her and will be waiting for us to join her one day. I also believe that that heavenly kingdom will be the ultimate fulfillment of that 23rd Psalm that Chad read for us. It will be a place of peace and rest and beauty. It will be a place where God provides for all of our needs. It will be a place where there is no more room for fear or pain. It will be a place of true joy and beauty. And we trust that even now Roseanne is there enjoying the promises of her faith. Assured for her through her Savior Jesus Christ. There is also a second promise in John 14, though. A promise for those of us who remain to live in this imperfect world, where pain and grief still exist. I, I know that many of you who knew Roseanne will miss her presence in your life and grieve her loss. And the Gospel of John offers a word of hope and assurance for us as well. We are told that Jesus will send the Holy Spirit, a, God, a part of God's own self, into our lives in this world to be our comforter, to remind us of the promises of our faith, to walk with us through our times of need, and to give us strength and encouragement in all of our times of need. For those of you who knew Roseanne and will miss her presence in your life, take hope and strength from that promise that God understands those feelings of loss and has promised through that Holy Spirit to walk through these times with you, to bring you strength and help. In times such as this, I believe that the Christian faith ultimately offers all of us a promise of hope. We have the hope that through Jesus Christ, Roseanne has gone on to a new and eternal life with God. We have the hope that she is in a place of peace and joy and rest. We have the hope that all of us who believe will one day join her in that place. And as we carry on in this world, we have the hope that God's help, strength, and comfort will be with us today and always. And so as we remember and celebrate the life of Roseanne Weaver today, 
May our shared faith in Jesus Christ bring you hope, peace, and strength now and always. As a part of our remembering Roseanne and celebrating her life, we want to hear the promises of our faith, but we also want to remember her and her life here among us. And so there are several members of her family that have asked to say a, a few words today about Roseanne. Um, I know that her son, Tom, uh, her grandchildren, Jacob and Catherine, and her son-in-law, Mike, have all um, expressed an interest to speak. Tom, would you like to go first? As we remember, Mom had many facets, and the one facet that I remember more than anything else is, is her sense of humor. This explains the bear that I put beside her, if you're wondering. <laughs> we went several Christmases where Mom just kept trying to come up with a more audacious, strange gift for me. It culminated with this, this bear, which I brought home, put it in my put it in my uh, home proudly. My mom thought I was just going to leave it. Much to my wife's chagrin, it got a nice prominent place. When we brought mom up to the uh, assisted living to be with us this past few years, I placed that bear outside her door <laughs> <coughs> just so she could be greeted by it and remembered. And I thought it was proper that it should be here just to remind us, me of her sense of humor. I, I have more that I, I just can't but this out. One thing about Roseanne was, was family. Everything was about family. It didn't matter if you was part of the family or if you were a, um, a band kid. She was part of the family. It was very important, important to her. And uh, Pastor her. mentioned about dinners, Christmas dinners. When I first was married, she put these name tags out on the table. And I says, I know what my name is. Why do I need a name tag? But she thought that was important to have. And uh, always telling the stories of the other kids when they were young, you know, taking them out to Lake Frack and leave them there, go fishing and play and then pick them up after she got off work. And uh, went to every event that her children were at. Didn't matter if it was a choir or a band, but she she made every one. And always uh, supported every decision that the kids made. She might not agree, but she supported them very much so. And. Uh, you know, she always talked about her son-in-laws and, and her daughter-in-law, you know, made sure that we was part of the family, felt, felt good about being in the family, and uh, always appreciated that. Then, of course, because I'm a grandfather myself, she loved her grandkids. She was very proud of them. Uh, when she could be involved and uh, <clears throat> you know the, the kids you know and Debbie Jan and 
Tom were all in band. They were very musically inclined. And guess what? All the grandkids are very m musically inclined or, they, or, or singers. So the, that heritage part is continued. And we all love, loved her very, very much. These are all the things that remind me of Grandma Rosie. Getting in late to Galesburg after driving seven hours from Minnesota and immediately getting in her chair and her reading Madeline to me. Going outside and search for trees of characters to sketch them. Watching the squirrels in her backyard spin round and round and upside down on the squirrel roller while trying to get corn. The hundreds of different cows in her kitchen, which had originally been unintentional, but grew to become uh, quite the chaotic fun, how to make really good spinach bisque soup, all of the hidden gems um, of Gelsberg that she showed me, that even though schnauzers sound really cranky when they bark, they really are just happy to see you, how to easily uh, go back in your knitting to fix mistakes, which has been a very essential skill for me, her recording bedtime stories on the tape so that her grandchildren could listen to them miles away, how to play Pinochle, and then how to skunk my dad and brother at Pinochle, that you can still have a big group of friends even when you're old, and they can still be BFFs with your significant other even when you're old as well. Uh, thank you, Grandma Rosie, for all the memories and lessons. Rosanna Weaver was a wife, a mother to three, a worker, a hobbyist, a self-starter, and a self-learner. To Gelsberg, she was a trailblazer, opening new doors to women. And uh, to us, she was a matriarch, the one who kept our family bonds strong. Uh, I'd just like to share what she meant to me, because to me, she was my grandma, Rosie. I only learned later that her name was Roseanne, and then later that it, it was Rose and so I always knew her as Rosie. This, for, this first story, um, an experience I had at band camp, uh, it was tradition for our band teacher to tell us a Christmas story before our band concert. This, this story was um, about a grandson who was afraid to see his grandmother because she had had a stroke. He would get letters from her and the ending line was always, and I can't wait for a cup of Christmas tea. And he didn't want to see her in a diminished state. No one ever wants to see their grandmother and mother that way. But eventually he worked up the nerve and though she did have some signs of a stroke, uh, he found that she was still the woman who helped raise him, the wonderful, vibrant woman that he knew. And my band director ended that and said, doesn't that just make you think about your grandparents? And I said, yeah, when my grandma had a stroke, uh, she made my grandpa ride shotgun on the way there. <laughs> I said, that's one tough old broad. I was like, you're telling me. <laughs> this next story is, again, at Christmas. It involves uh, Andrew and I think Jessica. I can't quite remember, but I recruited them to um, use my toy airplanes to mess up grandma's ceiling. I convinced them that there was a boogeyman that stole our toys rather than just we lost them because we were careless. And uh, we heard the adults walking upstairs, and so we just, <laughs> Grandma heard this, and she came down and said, what are you doing to my ceiling? And that was the first time she'd ever been stern with me, and she put the fear of God in me. And it remains to this day. <laughs> I 
take that away from that, um, you know, it was hurt. Think before you do something. And that was the first time I really realized that my actions had consequences. This um, last story is maybe a year or two ago. I don't think it was on Christmas, but let's just say it was. It was at the nursing home. They're having some sort of holiday dinner. And again, I didn't, like for the first story, I didn't want to go see her because she was old, very old. And um, my parents made me go. I'm glad they did. And I sat down, and they went to get plates for us. And uh, it was hard to hear because of all the stuff. And then I was shouting even louder over it because, you know, she's got the hearing. And she's, she looked at me with clarity and said, well, you didn't, you didn't quite finish your degree, did you? I said, oh, no, but, you know, I don't really know what I'm going to do with that. And she looked at me clearly and said, well, don't you think you ought to? And I just knew there's no weaseling out of it at that point. Because it's on the list, but I'll get it done. I will, Grandma. And it was just in that moment seeing that she was still the same woman, despite the age. She remained true to herself. And lastly, I would just like to reflect on these lessons that these stories kind of remind me of. Uh, drive yourself to the hospital, probably don't do that, but be self-reliant. Uh, think before you act and mess up someone's ceiling. Finish what you start with your degree. And I see these lessons, and I keep them in my heart, and I see them in all of us here. When my dad scolds me, I see grandma or grandpa, and in and, and that way they're still with us. It's not quite as good as the real thing though, is it? We'll say goodbye today and we'll still have her with us, but it would be so much better to have her in person. But why is that? Why must she go now? And I think that it's because it's what parents do. They go before you to check things out, make sure the floorboards and that house up above is solid so their grandkids can run around. They go before us to show us the way and make sure it's safe. And I thank you, Grandma. I'll see you one day. I appreciate all of the family members for sharing those memories as you knew Roseanne in a way that none of the rest of us ever could. Roseanne Weaver was born May 7th, 1929 in Galesburg, Illinois, and named after her maternal grandmother. Her parents were Robert and Hazel May Mead. Roseanne was raised and educated in Galesburg, graduating from Galesburg High School in 1947. At times, she attended the University of Illinois and Carl Sandburg College. Roseanne married Robert J. Weaver of Canton, Illinois, September 9, 1951, at Galesburg First United Methodist Church. After five years of dating, which began with her filling in on a double date with him. Roseanne's first business-related job was for Brown Specialty Company as a bookkeeper. Following her position there, she was a private secretary for the steel purchasing agent at Admiral Corporations. She then worked for 35 years at Galesburg Broadcasting Company, first as a bookkeeper and then as office manager. Following that as an account executive serving in Galesburg and the surrounding area. Roseanne had a strong love for Galesburg and volunteered much of her time to the Galesburg community through the years. She served on the board of Lincoln School PTA, 
was president of the Galesburg High School Band Parent Association, a member of the Galesburg Civic Art Center Board, the Midwest Credit Union Board, the Knox Galesburg Symphony Board, and the Galesburg Convention and Visitor Center. She also served on the Galesburg Chamber of Commerce and organized a membership drive of the chamber, which produced the largest membership ever. She was a hostess of the Galesburg Chamber of Commerce, Galesburg On The Go Breakfasts. She was the chairperson and organizer for the Chamber of Commerce Thanksgiving luncheons and was guest speaker on occasion. Roseanne was a member of Sunrise Rotary, where she was named a Paul Harris Fellow, the highest award presented by Rosary, Rotary International. Roseanne was especially proud to be the first woman who was invited to join the local Rotary Club. She was also an active member of a PEO chapter. When she re retired, she volunteered as a reading buddy at Gale Elementary School. Roseanne's hobbies were knitting, playing pinochle and bridge, writing and art. In her lifetime, she cut silhouettes as well as pencil sketched and painted numerous watercolors. Roseanne's watercolor paintings and silhouettes were displayed at the Art Center in Galesburg. One of her watercolor paintings was selected by Joanne Goody of Knox College to hang in the Galesburg Civic Art Center's permanent collection. Roseanne wrote and published two cookbooks, Cooking with Grandma Rosie and Still Cooking with Grandma Rosie. For her family, she also wrote a book about her life growing up during the Great Depression. Roseanne was preceded in death by her husband, Robert, her parents, a brother, Franklin Howard Mead, and a sister, Mary Louise Weaver. She is survived by three children, Janice, Deborah, and Thomas. Their spouses, Chad, Michael, and Lori. Four grandchildren, Catherine, Jessica, Jacob, and Andrew. And four great-grandchildren, Emma, Roseanne. William, James, and Dean. Roseanne Weaver died on March 5th, 2021 at the age of 91. And we gather together today to remember and celebrate her life. We will continue that celebration with another hymn of our faith, the hymn of promise. Again, I'll invite the her children to come and lead us in worship. And for those of you in the room who are comfortable doing so, again, we invite you to stand and join the song.
seated. Would you join with me again in a time of prayer? Almighty God, everything that you have given us, we know is a gift from you. As first you gave Roseanne to us, we give her now back to you. We pray that you would receive Roseanne into the arms of your mercy. Raise her up with all of your people and grant to her that gift of eternal life that was promised through Jesus Christ, her Savior. Receive us also. Raise us into a new life with you and help us so to love and serve you in this world that we too may enter into your joy in the world to come. We thank you, O oh God, for Roseanne and all of the blessings that she has experienced and continues to experience through Jesus Christ. We thank you for all that she shared with so many of us gathered here. We thank you also for all that you have blessed us with even to this day. For the gift of joy in days of health and strength and for the gifts of your presence and promise in days of pain and grief. Above all else, we thank you for Jesus, who knew our griefs, who died our death and rose for our sake, and who lives and prays for us. It is in his holy name that we entrust Roseanne and ourselves to you today. The family, has, the funeral home has asked me to announce that for those who will be going out to join us at the gravesite, we'll be departing the church on Ferris Street. So if traffic will not allow you to join the line um, out on Seminary Street, you're welcome to pull around to Ferris and wait for us and join along there. But brothers and sisters, as we depart from this place, May the peace of God, which passes all understanding, keep your heart and mind in the knowledge of love and love of God. And may the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit be with us all today and always. Amen. Amen.